The governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, says he's committed to supporting creative activities as well as promoting Igbo language and culture in schools across the state. Governor Obiano said this during the second edition of the 2018 Anambra State Literacy Festival in Oka, the state capital, which targets development of teachers, pupils and students to be efficient readers and writers. Governor Willie Obiano, in the company of his wife, Ebele Obiano, arrives at Imo's house in Orca, the Anambra State Capital, for the 2018 Anambra State Literacy Festival, organized by the State Ministry of Education and the Reading Association of Nigeria. The program, which attracts teachers and students from schools across the state, aims at creating a platform to revive reading culture from an early age. In this festival, we shall reward best teacher of the year at the state, senatorial, local government areas, clusters, and school levels. The aim is to celebrate our children and teachers and encourage them to put in their best at all times. It's also an opportunity to review and explore the content of a book written by the wife of the state governor titled Willie Obiano, An Intimate Biography. The book highlights the potentials of the state governor and aims to motivate the younger generation. We are using this book to bring out the creativity in our children. We are going to answer quizzes from this book. We are going to do drama. We are going to do debate. We are going to do a whole lot of things from this book. Impressed by the performance of the students after the quiz, recitation, and speech session, Mrs. Obiano speaks on the importance of reading. You read to learn, you read to make yourself happy, you read to get what, to get to know what life is all about, what is our take to everyone. Now we have social media, we have televisions, but we still need to cultivate the habit of reading. Governor Obiano also gives an assurance of his commitment to supporting creative activities in schools across the state. I've been motivated by what I've seen today. I'll be supporting this program until every school in the number of states has uh, The event is rounded off with an awards presentation to the best teachers and pupils in creative activities. Ethnic bias continues to pose a challenge in national unity, and the outcome on integration policies and programs in Nigeria have fallen far below expectations despite efforts by governments in promoting national integration. This is the view of the chairman and chief executive officer of Channels Media Group, Mr. John Momo, while delivering the sixth convocation lecture of the Afe Babalola University in Adoikiti, Kiti State. Mr. Momo believes that the right leadership and patriotic youth population is needed to transform the country. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. You may have your seat. The convocation lecture is one of the activities lined up to mark the ninth Founders Day and the sixth convocation ceremony of the Afe Babalola University. Guests cut across professionals, members of the University Senate, the academic and non-academic staff, students, as well as the founder of the institution, Are Afe Babalola, and his wife. Deconstructing the Nigerian problem as a panacea for national cohesion and transformation is the topic chosen for the lecture. Chairman of the occasion, Professor Ralph Akifalea, sets the tone by rekindling the call for true federalism and devolution of power. Too much power at the center is, needs to be decentralized. Establish or create police for effective national security. Make Senate sitting allowance. Reduce and remove the so-called 13.5 for Senate. 10.5 million for running costs for House of Representatives, create more institutional framework like the judiciary and the media. Attention shifts to the guest lecturer, the chairman and chief executive officer of Channels Media Group, Mr. John Momo. In dissecting the subject matter, Mr. Momo argues that the socio-economic and political challenges bedeviling Nigeria's democracy and unity is embodied in ethnic bias. One of the greatest challenges facing our country today 
is a threat to national unity. As centrifugal tensions, resource control, and self-determination, ethnicity-based identity politics and religious cleavages have enveloped national consciousness. But the issue of ethnicity and the exploitation of its residual gain has been with us from the beginning. The guest lecturer, however, believes these challenges are surmountable with the right leadership and youth resource fully harnessed. I dare say that the rivalry between the ethnic groups has made it impossible for leaders of high moral standing who live above boards, like the Are, who exude impeccable and predictable character, and who are ready to offer themselves for the development of the nation. They are discouraged. Ethnic affiliation has not allowed such leaders to emerge. And at each election, the emphasis has also always been on where the candidates came from, rather than on the right candidate for election. We need a greater sense of patriotism, a bit better disposition for nationalism, and an increased penchant to think about the welfare and prosperity of the community. We need the people who will put people first. People should be our priority. And I'm convinced that we can move to a level where the public interest becomes the first and better interest. And as you know, if a nation's youth population is educated, healthy, and productive, Rest assured that the nation will grow. And if all variables, all other variables are added up, you can be confident that the nation's future will be prosperous. In response to the lecture, the chief host of the gathering and founder of the institution, Are Afe Babalola, remarks that investment and in quality education plays a major role in promoting unity. This our country is a country of nations after 60 years a nation has not evolved from this country of nations and how do we get there first it is through quality education quality and functional education and by god's grace about the started the revolution we have quality and functional education. If there's anyone targeted with the challenge thrown here, perhaps they should be these young crop of graduates who are now equipped with fresh knowledge and skills to change the negative narrative about Nigeria and beam the light of hope towards a brighter and progressive Nigeria. On this note, please. From Ikiti, we move to Canada State, where as part of efforts to empower women, the state government will soon begin admitting female trainees on agricultural production. To achieve this, the government is set to build female wholesales at the state's agricultural training school. The state's deputy governor and commissioner for agriculture and natural resources, Nosiru Gwawuna, confirmed this during the 30th anniversary of the training school. Our correspondent, Idris Jibrin, tells us more. Advisory. Reviving the agriculture sector in Kano State has been a top agenda for the current administration in the last three years with the introduction of various farmer friendly initiatives. In a bid to further expand the sector and improve the lots of women in the agricultural value chain, the state government is set to admit female trainees in its training school. So far, based on this, the state government has contributed well over 500 million in terms of the counterpart funding and then it has contributed well over 40 million on the issue of post package post training packages to the graduate and trainees in collaboration with partners, Dr. Gawuna says the school has been contributing greatly towards achieving a sustainable capacity building for youth in various aspects of agricultural enterprise. Accordingly, the state government, in its efforts 
to revive agricultural sector in the last three years, either independently or in partnership with international agencies, launch programs which are farmer friendly, expected to enable increase in food production, average farm income, as well as ensuring food security and poverty alleviation amongst our people. As part of support from the federal government, a major policy framework on training youth farmers in modern and sustainable agriculture has since been adapted. The training program is 100% free of oil costs. 100% free of oil costs. This includes tuition, accommodation, uniform, feeding, medical care, and 3,000 monthly tuition. is aimed at providing trainees with skills emphasis is placed on practical demonstration. Therefore, 80% of the training period is used for practical demonstrations, while the story has the remaining 20%. With over 2,000 youth trained in areas of farm management, post-harvest handling and storage, many hope that these youth will make judicious use of what they have learned for the overall development of the agricultural sector in the state. Idris Jubrin, Channel Star Virgin News. On Business News, Anne will be telling us what the federal government is doing to prevent cyber attacks. Thank you, Melinda. And yes, the federal government has harmonized 25 million records under the National Identity Management Commission. The senior special assistant to the president on information communication technology, Larry or Larry Waji or Sibona, explained that the NSC market series that the aim is to beef up action against cyber attacks nationwide. Successfully harmonized over 25 million records onto the National Identities Database, bringing the total unique identities to over 32 million uh, records. Ongoing effort as part of this digitization of the national identity is to broaden the legal framework, cybersecurity, data privacy, and confidentiality policies to ensure the protection of this asset. It is important that we get these policies right and um, to provide trust between government and the citizens and ensure protection of vital data from all the challenges posed by digitization. It is exciting, however, listing the numerous opportunities that a harmonized digital identity platform will bring to the private sector, especially in the exchange, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and others in the financial services sector. It will open up a whole new market segment, either though not accessible due to constraints with KYC. The Nigerian Stock Exchange is partnering some domestic data analytics firms to promote best investment decisions for retail and corporate investors. The chief executive of the NSC, Mr. Oscar Onyema, made this known while explaining the benefit of the NSC digital product at the market data workshop. The platform delivers faster and safer payment method, which is protected by best-in-class IT and card security features in line with global best practices. We are also forging strategic partnerships with data analytics firms and other actors in the fintech ecosystem to develop solutions which will help our investors around the world optimize investment decision making. For, for this reason, the NSC established the Enterprise Innovation Hub in August 2018. The hub is well positioned to incubate and accelerate ideas that meet market needs through collaborative partnerships. And still on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, it has ended the third trading week of October in the green with 1.19% rise in the all-share index and about 141 billion naira added to the total value of listed equities. The market's modest performance was driven by strong bargain hunting for high-valued stocks in three sessions this week, with a higher total volume of 1.3 million shares traded in 13,478 transactions. In sectoral performance, only the banking and insurance sectors closed with positive sentiment, 
On the price table, 20 equities recorded gains, 42 recorded some load shed, while the share price of 107 equities remained unchanged this week. And that's business news for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. <laughs>